And for us, it's never been about the money. You know, it's, it's always been about these young people all over the world and old people, all, creators from everywhere. Like, can we liberate the idea of songs? Can we, can we, can we help push people to be more experimental with their, with their words and their, their messages and their art and something that's so personal for them. And I, I don't, I don't, I don't see any of these like venture backed companies actually having a genuine approach to how they, they treat or deal with their community. So I'm I definitely keep them in mind in terms of continu continuing our fight to liberate music. All right, today we have Abe Batshan, who is the CEO and founder of BeatStars, one of the premier places to buy and sell beats, and wanted to have him on so we could have a conversation about this entire process, this landscape. And right before we recorded, Abe, you were just telling me about how you were listening to different podcasts and you could hear when you hear that BeatStar beats on a podcast travel podcast of course mine came from there how do you know that the beat for sure came from beat stars as opposed to somewhere else uh, well yeah i'm i'm a dude i listen to so much music on the platform like i process everything so much and i kind of i don't know if it's photographic memory in terms of when you hear something i just retain that information around around that piece of music forever like i know when i've heard something and, and so, um, yeah, so yeah, so I'll randomly like, you know, turn on the TV or turn on the radio or turn on, you know, TikTok or turn on SoundCloud or turn on anywhere. And I'm like, holy shit, these are Spotify, you know, and I'm listening to like some of the trending viral songs or the top billboard songs. I'm like, yeah, I know those beats. I know those beats. I've heard those before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you feel like there's so a pretty, distinct pretty, brand or sound that has that beat star sound that you can pick up on almost in the same way that a uh, well-known and established producer has that sound? Like you could hear a track and be like, oh, that's a Neptune's track, even if I'd never heard it before. Do you feel like that's the case for a beat stars beats? Good question. It, you know, maybe eight years ago, nine years ago. Yeah, I could have you know, been like, okay, that's definitely an influence from the marketplace, from the sound, from the platform. But today with the amount of variety and just so many different genres and sub genres and styles, styles of music that's getting uploaded to beat stars, it's impossible to just define it to one, one sound anymore, but maybe 10 years ago for sure. Um, yeah, not now, not now. Yeah. That makes sense from the time frame perspective. Cause I could imagine, yeah. especially in the early days, there are artists you have that are likely championing the service. And if they're bringing on others that want to have that artist type beat there, then there's going to be a sure. lot of that similarity. But over time, especially mm -hmm. with where you are now, over 200 million paid out to artists on this platform, that just speaks to the reach that you have and everything that you've been able to do from it. Yeah, man. So fulfilling to just like know that's the kind of impact the the tech the technology and platform is making for you know for creators as lives i'm definitely not satisfied with that number at all you know I, I feel like it's but it's a great great motivational indicator for me to keep going and for the team to keep pushing but um you know our, our aspirations are a lot bigger than that for sure yeah yeah and yeah let's actually go back a bit because i think that could be a way to yeah. have the arc of where this is going of course, you started mm -hmm. this company in 2008, but in the 2000s, yeah. it was such a different landscape for producers, beat makers. And I look at that era mm -hmm. as being quite top heavy, right? If you were one of the super Very. producers, if you were Timbaland, if you were Pharrell, if you were Kanye, then you almost had mm -hmm. a you know quasi monopoly in a particular area of just what you could charge, what you could do. But for everyone else that wasn't a superstar... It was a much more challenging landscape, I could assume. Can you speak to what it was like that time frame? Oh, so challenging, man. So challenging. You know, I was I was working at Ingrooves prior to prior prior to me starting up Beat Stars, and you know, I'd work with a bunch of artists and 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 labels, and I'd get to know like the producers behind some of the work that's that's being released, and even for those top heavy guys that I was talking to they started definitely feeling a shift in how operationally the, 
the record labels were approaching licensing of beats and the development of an artist, you know, you know, I think I just saw a recent article. I, I forget which publication, Oh, maybe billboard just the other day about how everyone's a distributor. Now all the majors are just, just, you know, they're distributors, each one of their kind of like, sub companies under the parent companies are all, you know, competing with each other actually as, a, as, as distribution companies and it's creating like a healthy competition of distribution. And, um, and so, you know, that wasn't the case back then, man, that was, you know, back, back in the day, like the, the, you know, the, the, the major record labels weren't operating from a DIY, you know, distribution mindset of like mass distribution, mass releases of content. That wasn't, that wasn't the mindset. So yeah, it was, it was a much more controlled environment with which producers actually were contributing to, you know, these, these, these songs or these albums that were, you know, the majority of what we were listening to back in 2008. And I think, you know, what changed it all was, was the emergence of probably YouTube, right? The emergence of YouTube and SoundCloud and, you know, and beat stars, right. And, and, and the accessibility and the ability to now reach a broader and global audience of, uh, collaborators and music creators. And yeah, we, I mean, we were, we were kind of laughed out. We were kind of laughed at in the beginning, you know, we were kind of, you know, paint, of course, you know, everything, everything different, everything different kind of that goes against the grain that goes against the traditional way of how things are done. There's always, there's always going to be some resistance to that model or that or any, or any resistance to, to those ideas. And um, it used to bother me back in the day. And I used to get some of these super producers, you know, some of them would send me like dirty messages. Like you're, you're fucking up the game. You're, 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 you're saturating, you're, you're, you're devaluing our art. And I didn't see it that way. You know, I didn't see it that way. I, I, I was, I was seeing it as, as a new opportunity to create more, more and, and broader reach of intellectual property for the independent creator that can actually sustain themselves in, in, in a world where it's controlled by a few different organizations, you know? Yeah. So, um, definitely yeah, I was yeah thinking yeah. about those artists themselves. I'm thinking back to that time. There was that stat, maybe it was in 2002 or 2003, where they said that 43% mm. of the songs on the radio were Neptune songs. And I think you could have said right. the same about right. Timbaland. You could have said the same about Max Martin or any of these people that are just on the yeah. radio so much, but you come in with this yeah. platform that very much speaks to where mm -hmm. we were in the music industry and where things were with technology with hip hop specifically, this is mm -hmm. the blog era is really starting to pick up. You're starting to see more of that DIY exactly. distribution from the artist side. SoundCloud is just mm -hmm. launching. Even Spotify was still in the early days, but streaming yeah. still didn't yeah. take off the way it did. And I could imagine that some of the mm -hmm. pushback or some of the response you got was from people feeling that you were likely ahead of the curve. And because of that, there was still a, several years before things really took off in streaming. So it was probably yeah. interesting just yeah. to see the landscape evolve. And then as you had success, you saw other yeah. competitors come in and other folks see the landscape and you're like, well, you know, I've been trying to tell you all, yeah. this is what the vision has been since the two thousands. Yeah. But back then right. the industry was just in such a place of people were still trying to push mm -hmm. CDs. Like people were still trying to fight piracy. Yeah. And like, when you think about that, mm -hmm. I'm not surprised at all that you had, face some of that pushback you did. Yeah. I mean, um, Dan, I don't, know, I, I don't know, you know, like remember going, I'm trying to kind of go back to those days uh, in hip hop. Everyone was the plug for certain things and you had to go through this person or this company in order to achieve some of the like artistry goals that you have as an artist, you know, and there was a determined route that you had to go and you had to go through certain gatekeepers in order to, you know, achieve success. And, and I, 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 it just bothered me from a human level, you know, it bothered me from a human level that we're not allowed to experiment and develop art, you know, closed, closed environments, never, never the, the, the outcome of those. Like, like you said, how many more Neptunes hits can we have continued to listen to on nothing against the Neptunes? I fucking love those guys, right? They're amazing. They're geniuses. But, and even them, they would tell you that, yeah, that kind of, Monopoly was probably unhealthy for the create for 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 music for artists all over the world. You know, I'm sure they will tell you that that opportunity was you know scarce. You know, opportunity was scarce, and 
and yeah, it was relationship driven industry, you know, so it was a different time, different time. And I think my goal was to just completely break it. Yeah. Thinking yeah. about that time yeah. too, you had the people that were the top producers at those times and they could charge hand over fist for a beat. I mean, there's the line where, you know, Timbaland's like, I'm getting half a mil for a beat. And if I'm thinking about just from the competitive dynamic, what happened there, you did have this very top heavy landscape. And in some ways they're telling you, Hey, you know, you're fucking up our money. And in some ways you are, but not necessarily in a bad way because you're letting everyone else that couldn't eat at all, at least get something right. So when you now exactly. introduce this marketplace exactly. and no, you don't necessarily have to pay half a million for a Timbaland beat to get on the radio. You could pay under a thousand dollars, a few hundred dollars to have one of the biggest songs of the summer on your music yes. and being able to do that lifts it up for everyone else. So I think whether it's your Timbaland's or your Mike will other folks could still get, you know, six figures or a lot of money, but I don't know if they're getting that 2006 or those 2003 checks that they were for the type of beats they did. But Dan, superstars are superstars in terms of creation, right? In, in terms of music production, even on beat stars, right? Even on beat stars, maybe, yeah, there's some producers on a platform that don't have that type of name recognition, name recognition in a game of only a handful of producers. It's kind of different now to gain that kind of name recognition, but there are superstars on beat stars. There are superstars that are generating half a million dollars in cumulative earnings in licensing revenue from one beat on beat stars. So those days of like earning hundreds of thousands of dollars on a, on a, on, on one track, is still happening on the platform. It's just happening in a different model. It's happening in a non-exclusive, non-exclusive model where thousands of produ- uh, recording artists are, you know, licensing that same production and have the rights to create another, another master version of of that that production. But at the end of the day, that producer has generated hundreds of thousands of dollars just from that one piece of content that lives as a catalog item in their store. And I'm hearing like huge songs now on the radio that those beats are still available non-exclusively on the platform. They're still available. So producers are becoming less and less willing to let go of their intellectual property exclusively because there's just so much back end earnings and recurring revenue and business building and, you know, forecasting of earnings for themselves that it doesn't make sense now for them to kind of give up the rights to one rights holder anymore. So now it's super competitive and it's, it's gotten to a point where I think competition is healthy in song making like, Hey, here's the beat $20. Then by the way, a lot of these beats that live on beat stars, if they existed back in those two thousands, when it was the heyday of license revenue of 200,000 a beat or 500,000 a beat from Timbo, like these beats are competing with those beats or even beyond them. Right. Cause these kids are pumping out, content like crazy, right? They're, they're bending these, they're bending this, the software in terms of DAW, the accessibility to digital VSTs and, and effects and processing and, and sound libraries and like their, their ability to like craft, you know, sonically like amazing, amazing records that penetrate every market around the world. Like it's much easier now back then it was harder, but yeah, I I think the earnings, the earnings potential is still there on beat stars. You know, I think it's, it's still there. Um, it still exists. And I, 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 and and that's why we, we're still seeing producers that have had tons of success, you know, licensing to major, major recording artists still maintaining and developing and building their, their online presence on beat stars. Like it's still, it's still a major income stream from them to the point where they can't neglect it and they can't completely immerse themselves in the traditional way of like, you know, music licensing within the industry. So it's, it's cool to see. It's cool to see a balance. You gotta have both. Yeah. You gotta have both. Oh yeah. Them. And I'm glad you brought that point up because that's an important distinction because, of course, we were talking before about the upfront money that the sewer producers were getting in the 2000s, but people were rarely talking about the totality of it and what it looks like. And that's what you're talking about here. And being able to measure it in totality makes so much more sense because with the way it currently is now with an artist releasing something on BeatStars, there's so many ways that they can generate money from that, whether that's especially if it's non-exclusive, as you mentioned, people can pay for it directly. Anyone that is then using that B, you could earn revenue directly, you know, from anything that's there, depending on the arrangement. But then I think you have this additional benefit where people 
especially with TikTok and all these other platforms, they want to be able to remix and make their own versions of songs and being able to do that and how that can compound on each other. That's what makes the platforms like this successful. And maybe it would be helpful to hear you mentioned that, you know, there are superstars on the platform that are making and exceeding a lot of those, um, you know, revenue totals that we had seen before. What is that? What is a typical breakdown of that look like? in terms of how much of that comes from upfront sales of people purchasing versus how much of it is the recurring and maybe even ballpark. We don't need anything too exact, but maybe to give an idea. Yeah. So I guess we can only attribute the upfront micro licensing revenue on BeatStars, right? That $200 million, that micro licensing. But if we wanted to get very, very technical, we can talk about the the earnings that were actually you know generated from those you know derivative works those those songs that were made from those beats and if you calculate the earnings from the millions of songs that are created on the platform every year that get distributed to DSPs and and DIY distributors you're talking probably billions of dollars of of earnings um, music copyright earnings from from all of these non-exclusive licensing licenses c- cumulatively. So I wish there was a way to calculate all that, but it's, you know, it's, it's hard to like quantify that. But I think today from an, from a platform earnings um, potential on BeatStars, I think the average, the average seller producer on the platform generates over a thousand dollars a year, you know um, which hey, a thousand bucks is, you know, not the craziest amount, but if you compare that to the average earnings of artists on these DSPs or, or, <laughs> or some of these, some of these other ways of earning revenue from music, um, you know, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to poke too many holes at uh, platforms that are, you know, kind of, you know, not building, building their businesses and products with the music creators in mind. I wish they would. I wish they would. But we're not going to get too <laughs> I was going to say, that. there's but someone I, listening I right I'm, now I'm pro- that is backing into the math of how many streams does it take to get $1,000 a year? Right. Exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah. I think if we, if we were to calculate, if we were to calculate like the stream versus earning ratio on BeatStars, um, yeah, our million streams are definitely generating a shit ton more, <laughs> a shit ton more than what you would earn, you know, but again, it's a different, different concept, different way of consumption. It's a different where things, things are happen happening differently than compared to, you know, the more bigger consumer products that are out there, which, you know, which we're going to keep up with them at some point though, I think. And that's one of our goals is, is to, is to build a more consumer um, friendly, friendly product that actually is not just niche to, artists and music producers. So we're, we're excited about what the future of what we can do for our creators. Can we talk a little bit more about that? What would that consumer side look like? Cause I think, as you mentioned, a lot of the creators themselves are the ones that are using the platform, the most getting the most out of it, but what would the more creator side focus look like? Oh, like, like a more creator f- focused platform that evolves what the evolution of what beat stars could be. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, we're already starting to do it. We're already starting to do it in terms of adding publishing administration, global publishing administration, partnership with our with 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 Sony Music Publishing, and giving giving you know giving our creators the ability to go and collect on you know all the royalties worldwide. Um, I think is a big one from all of these different different you know copyrights that are made on the platform that they still have ownership and rights to, you know, we don't, we don't take ownership of anything on the platform. You know, our, our creators right now keep a hundred percent of all their sales on, on the platform. They, they maintain all of their ownership. They, they dictate and decide what their license terms look like. We're just a technology layer, just facilitating this, this, this collaboration. And I think, you know, we'll, we'll definitely get into a lot more, businesses that are complementary to music licensing. So, you know, we're, we you know, we, we, we do allow our creators to sell sound kits and samples as well too. And I think we're, we're you know, we're going to build a more sophisticated product around that. 
Um, major, major companies are already licensing for, for, for syncs already off of the platform in, indirectly, even though that's kind of not the primary function on the platform. Um, so that's, that's something that, you know, we're, you know, we're exploring and, and going to expand on as well. Cause just another revenue stream. I was going to ask you about syncs you know, next, because I feel page. like that yeah. is so yeah. current and top of mind, especially the explosion of video mm-hmm. streaming right now and all of those projects. And so many people see the benefit of having a good sync. And I think we're having these conversations before, but ever since the Kate Bush song on stranger things, those conversations have happened so many more times more frequently than I've at least heard before then. For sure. For sure. Yeah. We used to have a man like eight years ago, we did have a sync license. I don't know why we took it away. We just kind of wanted to laser focus on just the non-exclusive licensing of artists and producers. But um, yeah, we're, we're, we're definitely, I mean, we're, we're already seeing our music in Netflix documentaries. We're already seeing our music, you know, synced um, on movies, TV shows, independent, independent films. It's on commercials for Adidas and, Madden, Madden video game, video games. We're, we're, we're seeing our content already being used in that way. So, you know, it makes sense to, uh, to, to develop a product that's, you know, tailored for that community for sure. The music mm-hmm. rights deals that have been happening and the copyright sales. So artists selling their catalogs oh, and these it, companies like it. hypnosis and others sure. buying them. There's producers that yeah. have been selling theirs too, like yeah. dark child and Timbaland has sure. any of that sure, sure, sure. affected, or have you seen any type of trickle that has played itself out with beat stars or more broadly, how producers have been buying and selling beats or their own catalog of music. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not too aware of too many cr- producers on the platform that have kind of sold their, their rights away or anything like that. It hasn't happened on the platform, but um, I'm sure, I'm sure there's been, you know, those investor kind of like investor copyright types that are out there acquiring rights of, of, you know, um, music, whether it's, you know, from, from the producer's side of, of things. Um, but I, I, I'm sure they get approached all the time. I just, I don't know of any like specific creator or producer on the platform that's done it yet. Uh, I'm, but I'm sure like a lot of people are having those conversations with them. For yeah. Sure. Cause I know on the artist side, artists yeah. get reached out to all the time now about this, whether it's from the main investment firms that we know, or even some that in my experience, don't really do much in music, but have reached out because they'll reach out to me to see if I can reach out to these artists, right? And I got to imagine right, that right. in some ways, not only are they looking for the artists themselves, they're looking, okay, where are these artists? Where are the catalogs that they own? So it's fascinating right. to see. I assume that it's likely yep. a conversation that, especially given the way your business is, I know you said that $1,000 is the average pay out annually that artists or that the beat makers and producers get on the platform. But I'm sure that it is quite top heavy itself where, you know, there are the few that are just bringing in so much. And I'm sure that they're probably hearing some of those conversations every now and then. For sure. For sure. For sure. Um, Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure it's happening. Yeah. hundred percent. One of the things that I had seen, especially with BeatStars, we talked about how much growth you've had recently. And I believe this was at July, 2020, you had $85 million in payouts that you had done to artists Mm. at, or not artists to beat makers specifically at that point, since you had launched a platform in 2008. Mm -hmm. And then you had recently announced a few months back here now in 2022, that you had had 200 million. So quite a big jump and almost double in less than a two year span. One, it would be great to hear what that was like and also what are the steps that happened or what are the things that you all had done that helped you, you know, double everything that you had done the past decade plus in the past two years? Yeah. I mean, our, our growth trajectory, our growth trajectory, even the years prior were hundred percent year over year as well too. So we were already kind of pre pandemic move. Like that was our growth trajectory prior as well just took us a long time. It just took us a long time. We did it the slow and steady way. And the last two years, I would say, you know, for sure, the pandemic put a priority. Yeah, I guess, I guess people started questioning their existence, man. You know, like we're starting to, you know, we started questioning our existence and we're like, am I going to, am I going to, am I not going to explore my art? You know, like I I know I, I was doing it. I was making more music, you know, during the pandemic. And, um, 
and I would, you know, meet a lot of our creators and I'm, and I would hear, hear their stories and like, yeah, I started singing, I started singing during the pandemic or I started, started uh, making beats more seriously and I needed, I needed an, I'm, I'm home and I needed an outlet to kind of license and sell them. And so I think the pandemic definitely kind of accelerated the priority or like top of mind of, of, of creators to take it more seriously or in, or to, to kind of, you know, explore more serious options um, for monetizing, for monetizing their music. So um, it's been a blessing to, to kind of see, see the, um, the platform and marketplace grow globally all over the world. And, um, and yeah, the, the marketplace is still, still, still booming. It's still going crazy. I think, you know, we'll, we'll achieve over 70 million this year for sure. That's kind of our projection could be more. Um, so yeah, the licensing activity is, is continuing to um, go great. I'm excited. I'm excited. That's about good the to hear now. because, I am not surprised to hear the growth of the pandemic. I think there's so many things we can look back on the past two and a half years where especially something like this, where the art of doing it is something that people could do at home. So many people that are creating yeah. products or creating services or music or media and putting it onto the world, so much of that picked up and there was so much that was successful. And I think we saw that with the way the stocks went and the way that everything was. So you had this run from March 2020 pretty much up until let's say November, 2021, when everything was booming, right? The past six months, we saw certain things come right. back down to earth a bit. And I think there were a lot of the pandemic stocks For and sure. a lot For of the sure. companies, even the ones in the music industry that had sky high valuations coming back down to earth a little right. bit. Right. But at least yeah. for you all, I'm getting the impression that that hasn't yeah. necessarily yeah. impacted you from that perspective, given I think you have a different business model than a lot of the companies that had, you know, challenges yeah, there, but yeah. how have the past three to six months been specifically? I, I think our, yeah, I think our, our growth has, has kind of leveled off, leveled off a little bit. We're kind of, you know, no, I guess the normalization of things are happening for sure. Um, and we're having to work harder to like retain our, re retain our subscribers and users for sure. It's, it's just shifting our approach and, um, adjusting and pivoting to more accessible business models for, for this time and this moment in, in our history. I mean, it's, it's for sure a recession it's happening globally. It's, 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 you know, it's impacting a lot of people's lives and we need to make sure that we kind of still, you know, um, factor that in mind and, and create products that are, are still useful and accessible and functional for, for anyone in, with any economic status that they're in, you know, because I, it breaks my soul if someone, you know, can't afford a BeatStar subscription and can't explore their art and can't develop themselves and get to the, you know, meet those goals because of this current, current space that we're in right now. So we're, we're definitely pivoting and adjusting and thinking about new and, and better um, accessible business models that can cater to anyone with any kind of economic status. So yeah, we're, we're definitely adjusting things though. Yeah, sure. I, I could, I could imagine. I do think though that these things aren't permanent and of course we'll see things pick up again. It's just a matter of the timing there specifically. I do feel like for you all, it's interesting because the future of where this all is heading right now. You, as you mentioned, I think that you were a bit ahead of the curve. So, you know, growth in the early days may not have been as fast, but now we're in this place where people saw the success you had, people see the potential of where things are going. And now more companies are starting to launch their own beat marketplaces and ones that were established in other places. Have you seen that impact what you've seen in your business? Because I know that at least from other people I talk to that are in streaming of the DSPs, they've talked about how we've switched from this herbivore market where everyone's just capturing people that are generally wanting subscriptions to now they're in this carnivore mode of competing with each other. Have you seen any of that where you feel like the people who are beat makers now, it's not so much capturing new ones, it's essentially positioning yourselves from the competitors who have come after you. Yeah, I'm definitely, you know, definitely aware of um the competitors um and, you know, and a lot of these a lot of these guys were definitely ad admirers of of what we've done. Um you know, know them personally. Um it's flattering, you know, it's flattering to see in terms of, 
people being people being inspired by the things that I create and build and what we do here as a company as well too. And it's you know it's part of being in a capitalistic uh, society that we're in. You know they you know monkey see monkey do. <laughs> you know definitely has increased our. I feel like it's increased our kind of our competitive spirits here at the company to want to be more innovative. I think it's a blessing that there's other folks trying to come into our space. For me, I've been doing this for almost 15 years, right? So it's, I, I, I need, I need a, I need a kick in the ass in terms of where I want to go in my career and where the, the aspirations, where I want to see beat stars. I mean, we've always been driven and always been the hardest working and most caring community that you'll ever see in terms of the music producers. But, um, yeah, I just use it yeah. as a as a competitive chip to keep moving and pushing and pushing for our creators to 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 provide even more fair and um, useful products for them. You know, but I, I haven't seen a shift in like our business or anything like that because of the competitors. You know, I I don't uh, I you know it may take a while for for that to happen if 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 they do something super unique or you know what, what whatever it is that they're doing. But I haven't I haven't seen anything that's like exciting in, a, in from a, from an innovation standpoint. It's just monkey see, monkey do, copycats. Yeah, that was going to be my next question to see if are there mm-hmm. new things that you're seeing the competitors do that make you say, oh, that's interesting, right? Because that would definitely validate the the, the ass kicking or the the, the 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 bit of the push there. It reminds you of that sports analogy, right? Like how Michael Jordan had to go create these yeah. demons out of thin air because there was really no one at this level. And anytime yeah. someone tried to say, oh, Jordan or Drexler, he just like squashed that immediately. So you all having that, yeah. Dude, I mean, I... I've always had that, you know, I'm a sports guy, huge sports guy, played sports my whole life too. And so I definitely competing with myself, you know, in terms of wanting to be better and extract more capacity of myself and see my, myself and my team's dreams continue to grow. But, um, yeah, I just use those as just another, another, um, you know, another factor into, and I'm not to say anyone's intentions are bad or anyone's intentions are good, but it's a little suspect. It's a little suspect. It's a little bit, I don't know what's the word, but it's just a, it it feels ingenuine. It feels like a land grab. It feels like a, a money, a money game, you know? And for us, it's never been about the money. You know, it's, it's always been about these young people all over the world and old people, all creators from everywhere. Like, can we liberate the idea of songs? Can we, can we, can we help push people to be more experimental with their, with their words and their, their messages and their art and something that's so personal for them. And I, I don't, I don't, I don't see any of these like venture backed companies or highly in, you know, big invested type type of companies actually having a genuine approach to how they, they treat or deal with their community. So I'm, I'm really not worried about it, but I'll, you know, I, I, I definitely keep them in mind in terms of, you know, continue, continuing our fight. How do you feel in general music? about the amount of VC money that has entered music and music tech and the platforms and companies that have been launched? Dude, where was this money when I was in like Silicon Valley? <laughs> you know, um, I mean, dude, I lived in, you know, I'm from, I'm from the East Bay, you know, I'm from, I'm from, from Hayward, California. And, you know, Silicon Valley was just right down the street. And when I was building BeatStars, um, man, I couldn't, I couldn't even get a meeting with these guys. Like I created 12 of the most amazing decks throughout my career that no one ever actually saw. Like I couldn't, couldn't sell anyone on the concept of investing into music. It was, but you know, I understand that at that time, the music industry was going through a huge transitional moment. Like everyone was really scared um, about the future of music. So it was, it was, you know, it was, you know, it was pretty disastrous in terms of where music was at that time. And and if I wasn't an investor, I probably wouldn't have invested in me either, but I never even got an opportunity to even, um, you know, meet investors or pitch the ideas of BeatStars. We had to bootstrap this thing the whole way. And our creators invested in us. Our, our customers did. We built this, th- we built this thing together with them. You know, we just continue to reinvest every little penny that we made back into the platform. Um, and so I think it made the journey a lot more, f- you know, satisfying, you know, but, it's exciting that there's there's it's exciting that there's much more um, investment and people willing to believe in other entrepreneurs and their ideas. I think it's cool. It pushes all of us, you know. It pushes our creative, you know, 
boundaries and it's cool to see um, money flow. And I, I'm happy that you know other entrepreneurs are not going to have to struggle the way that I did for four, 13, 14 years before I was, you know, able to kind of like sustain ourselves, you know? So it's like, but, you know, we kind of always figured out ways to su- sustain ourselves and, 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 and build organically, which has been beautiful. Um, and we've been profitable since day one. We just continue to run lean, you know, and just not be wasteful and just, you know, yeah. So it's exciting. I don't know where it's going to go. Um, I see, a, uh, I mean, I don't know where a lot of the money is actually flowing in music tech, really. You, you probably know more than me, Dan. I don't pay attention to a lot of you're too busy building stuff, to track but, this stuff. Um, That's yeah, my just, job. <laughs> I'm busy, man. We're too busy, dude. Too busy, yeah. dude. Too busy. With that, though, do you get more interest or offers from any of these tech companies now? Because I've started to hear from a lot of the companies that rose up on the same time frame that you did that now when all this money's poured in, now they're getting the – attention to and the interest to from these investors that wouldn't have paid attention before. But now it's much less about the initial investment. Now they're trying to either acquire and now they're trying to do a joint venture, do these things. What have those conversations been like? Right. Yeah, it's getting, it's definitely getting aggressive for sure. And I think, you know, because of the I think because of where we are right now economically, you know, in, investors, you know, feel like they can come in and get a good deal right now for all of these, um, all these startups or companies that have existed even prior to the pandemic that are still thriving through it as well. Um, yeah, I'm seeing a, I'm seeing a lot of acquisitions happen, a lot of private equity stuff happening, um, and it's 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 interesting. We don't need the money, Dan, in terms of like where we are financially. We're you know, we're self-sustaining. We've got a ton of money in the bank and we have our investment plan plan internally to kind of finish our, you know, not finish, but continue our roadmap of all the things that we dream of wanting to do and build with, within, within our, our, our goals at BeatStars. So, um, thank God I'm, I'm healthy. I'm, I'm feeling good. I, I, I just, um, um, I'm, I'm in remission. I, I, I battled cancer the last couple of years during the pandemic and, um, you know, that was a shaky moment for me during that time. It was really up and down. I didn't know where my future was and, you know, I'm still, still kind of in it, but I'm thankful, thankfully feeling, feeling really well and just energized and, um, yeah, I'm enjoying, I'm, jo- I'm enjoying independence. I'm enjoying independence. And I really, I really feel that, um, you know, we're, we're in a good, good spot to kind of push through this kind of down moment of the economy and, you know, head down and focus on our creators while everyone is just focusing on profit and revenue. And we're, we're just, you know, we're going to, we're going to do the opposite and just build something that's going to be a utility for people for, for many years. to Yeah, come, definitely. I you know? mean, you being able to, they're coming though. They're, they're throwing checks they're you know, they're throwing checks at us. They're, you know, they're making offers, but we're just, yeah, we're just not yeah. ready right now. And like we're you said, you have the vision for this and the amount that you've poured into it, the amount that you've gone through, as you mentioned, especially in recent years, like all that comes through with the story. And I think that is what connects with both the artists and what connects with anyone that may be interested from a business perspective. And I think you do have the control, the autonomy to make those shots when you want to. And that's the power of bootstrapping, right? We all know the trade-offs where, yeah, it can take time as you very well know. But if you're able to get through the other side, the autonomy you have, you could make decisions. Like you don't have to have, you know, the investors breathing down your neck or anything else or trying to wonder why you're not pumping more Facebook and Google ads to go do this or that, right? Like you're able to do the things on your terms. And to clarify, is the ownership 100% you for the company or? No, it's not 100% me. Um, so, some employees have ownership in the company. Um, we do, we did take um, a minor, a very s- small minor investment from Sony Music Publishing when we did our joint venture together. Um, they've been great partners. They've been awesome. And they've been helping us kind of, you know, uh, strategize and scale our publishing business, which I believe in the last 16 months, we've had 26 Billboard 100 hits that, that, that are, that are from our BeatStars publishing roster of creators. Um, so exciting to see one of our producers, um, has two songs on Beyonce's new album. And I know, um, you know, we had Megan the Stallion's new, new single pressure delicious, um, with one of our producers, I believe it was hit kid, um, with future. So it's like, it's so cool to see that our, you know, our, 
our business is touching so many different parts of the music business. It's not just the independent creator. Like we're powering songs, even for the major, major superstar artists, which is, which is awesome to see. So yeah, I'm excited about the yeah. future. Man. I think we're just and getting started. It's always man. fascinating to hear how companies <laughs> like yours think about the compensation and things like that for employees, because with a lot of the other competitors or even others in the space, especially with the amount mm. of money that's poured in, people are getting you know, equity in these companies and they are getting them because if they're VC back, then they have an exit in the mindset and you, you know, aren't coming from that perspective. So it's always interesting to hear, okay, what are the other things you're doing? So yeah, it sounds yeah. like you're still doing equity. I know. I oh, I forgot to mention, like there's 400 creators as well. 400 creators that invested in BeatStars when we partnered with uh, Indiegogo back in 2016 to be their, one of their, actually their, initial kind of equity crowdfunding launch partner when we, we, um, and, and, and it wasn't because we needed, we needed funds or needed money at that time. We did it because I, I, I loved, I loved the fact that our creators can actually like buy ownership into the, to the company and I can like continue serving them, man. I can continue feeling like I'm, you know, I'm, you know, I have to make sure I'm, reporting to these people because these are the people that keep me grounded. These are the people that keep me focused on, um, you know, how we impact all the other creators lives. So yeah, we have 400 other, um, creators from the platform that invested like $150,000 total during that campaign. So it was pretty cool to know that they're also on our, on our, uh, that's great. On our yeah, ownership to see on the cap table. That's, that's great. Nice. I'd like to close this conversation yeah. out yeah, man. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully to make some money at some point. Well, I mean, well, the, well, that depends how some of these conversations go with these, you know, companies breathing down your neck. So we'll exactly. see. Exactly. Um, but I, I like to close For this sure. conversation sure. out a bit and For talk sure. about focus because we talked a lot about creators and how you're focused on serving them. We're talking primarily about the yeah. people who are buying beats, the people that are selling beats, and the, anyone involved with that production or engineering process. But for you, I know what it's like to build a company. I'm sure there's been plenty of times where not just you or some of the people you're working with, they're like, oh, what if you did this? What if we did that, right? But you've been able to stay focused on, I'm sure part of it mm -hmm. is likely a function of yeah. your building as fast as you can, given the fact that you're bootstrapped, some of your focus is by design. But then on yeah. the other hand, now yeah. that things are starting to come in, you're starting to see the uh, success in reaping the rewards, I'm sure there's mm -hmm. likely some thoughts of maybe that thing that you had in the back of your mind for a few years, but now maybe it's a little bit easier to do if you're going to be, you know, mm -hmm. hitting, um, you know, nine figure payouts yeah. annually soon enough. What are some of those things, if there are, that you have on the roadmap for where things are going for other things you might be doing? Yeah, we definitely want to make some acquisitions for sure. We're exploring, we're exploring some of that too. Um, we're exploring some you know, some, some potential acquisitions. And I think we'll, maybe we'll do our first one, you know, maybe by, by the beginning of 2023, never know. So we're, we're definitely thinking about um, how can we acquire some technology or companies or communities that really would help elevate what we're doing. Um, so definitely, definitely thinking about that. We're, we're investing a ton in technology, man. We're, I mean, our engineering team, um, we're probably, probably we'll, you know, we'll double by next year. I think we're at like 40, 40 people on the engineering team now. So we have all of these cool projects that these engineering pods are working on and it's exciting to see. Um, so you'll definitely start seeing a, a lot more innovation more frequently from BeatStars soon. We have spent and it may look like focus, but really it's been just kind of a restraint of our technology for the last four or five years. We've been rebuilding um, our whole tech stack, the back end, front end, up, you know, the, the whole thing, because, you know, we were, we were still using legacy, the legacy platform from 2008 when it was just, you know, me and um, our members of the company, jo Joseph Aguilar, one of our, one of our engineers, you know, building it together. And, you know, we're just some kids, you know, just going crazy. We didn't, think that this thing was going to scale to millions and millions of creators all over the world. So we had to kind of pivot a few years, four years ago. And we're about, you know, we're about 95% done in terms of the full platform rebuild. And um, from a technology standpoint, um, you know, we're, we're competing with some of the biggest music services in the world in terms of our tech stack. Now we're, we're, you know, we're, we're prepared to 
to really do some damage now and build on top of what we're doing and optimize our offering and and also get get into some different verticals as well too. So yeah, it's kind of like a new rebirth of BeatStars in a sense, a whole a whole new um, a whole new team, a whole new technology stack, a whole new drive and purpose. And we're building out our executive team right now too. It's been just me in terms of executives. I was wearing all the hats and I don't know why I was doing that. And so we're, you know, we just hired a, uh, hired a head of people, Sarah Simmons, who just joined us. We have our CTO, Nader Ferris. Uh, we hired Damian Ritter as our president of label. Um, and then we had great Greg, Greg Mate- yeah, man, Dame is a legend and, you know, legend to me in terms of what he's done on the independent record label front, you know, and what he's been able to do. The dude's one of the smartest guys I know. And I'm excited to to have him lead the initial kind of kickoff of what a Beat Stars record label can look like. Like we, you know, so many amazing artists have been discovered on Beat Stars, even just from our competitions, you know, like we discovered Ali Ali Gotti won one of our song contests and he's got billions of streams, you know, Joyner Lucas and Token and, um, you know, Anise. Anise is a, a, an independent artist right now that's doing some amazing things, um, touring, selling out tour, tour. You know, he's got a hit song called Sun and Moon and just killing it on TikTok. And just so cool, man. Just so cool to see all of these amazing artists take take and utilize the platform the best way and build careers. And yeah, so it's cool to see all these different things happen and finally bringing some like seasoned leadership to you know, bounce things off of and build with and, um, and collaborate with. And it's, I I think I've come to a place in my career now. I feel like almost 15 years in, I can, I can let go of some control. And I, I think I've matured enough as an executive to now understand and articulate what the company needs and what we want in our dreams and now do it in a collaborative way with a bunch of other amazing people that have the same kind of mission. So it's, it's exciting to see what this new phase of beat stars goes into for sure. Making moves. Love to hear Trying it. Trying to, man. <laughs> hey, hey, that's, that's, that's the journey. That's the journey. Well, Abe, this has been great. Appreciate you for coming on. And before we let you go, want to make sure that people that are listening know where to find you. So where can they go to either follow you or to follow beat stars if they want to tap in more? Thanks, Dan. Dude, I'm so I'm a big fan of yours. Like I told you before the podcast, congratulations. Um, amazing to follow your journey as well. And uh, congrats again. Um, to fo- follow BeatStars at BeatStars, B-E-A-T-S-T-A-R-S, everywhere. Um, my personal social media is shut down everywhere for the last few months. I shut it down, but it, I'm going to bring it back. And it's uh, just at a batch on. And I'm um, excited to hear the feedback from this um, from this episode from, from, from folks listening to it. So appreciate you having me on man of course and best of luck to you and best of luck to you from the health most importantly and with the business too thank you sir 